having with that was when we were seeing those roams. The fact that Birdman was roaming up and Palm Goat was extremely exposed. Huge wave stacked in. Jungler bot side should have been kills. Didn't come out. I don't like seeing that. I don't want to keep seeing that as we enter this draft for game three. Yeah, let's see how draft does change. If it changes at all, because while... Hold a bear with me. They had an issue, but it didn't seem like a draft issue last game. So I don't know exactly what their strategy is going to be heading <laughs> into the next one. That's how I'm putting it. I'd agree with you there. I mean, the last couple of fights seemed like a mechanical difference more than anything else here. And I think it's reflecting in terms of the, the picks and bans we're seeing right now. AoE on the blue side this game, so they did swap sides. But the bans so far are identical to what we saw in game two. And I think that's fair because, as you said, not really a, a necessarily a draft issue here. And at the moment, AoE don't have to change anything either. We're still going to get a blue side first pick. Lee Sin, very high priority here. And... I don't know if they had to first pick it because Wyo, after last game, I don't think would have contested it that much, but it's still going to provide them a lot of value and a lot of flexibility as he has in the past. And this is not a, oh, I, I you know, it's, it's something that you want to see uh, Potato hit on because it's massive. Why, Varys Morgana again. Why, why do Wyo continue <laughs> to prioritize the Varys? This I do not understand. <laughs> Well, to be fair, I think the Varys worked out pretty well like in general across all the games. Yeah, I think it's an okay thing to pry, oh. It's but, safe. It, but it could be so much better. You can pick something else that does what Varys does more. For, because the, when, you, when you build lethal tempo on Varys, you're, like, he doesn't become as useful as Varys normally is in like those mid-game setup. He's much more just a standard AD carry. And it's good. He's got a CC ultimate. Um, and he's very powerful, he gets you lane priority, but I feel like they could just be saving that pick and having an actual strong point on the map as opposed to something that A, we can draft around and have be neutral. Thoughts? Kind of agree, but I, I think a lot of bot lane comes more, the prio comes from the supports uh, more than the ADC, and Varus is flexible enough that Varus with the right support can win the bot lane. It comes down to a lot what support pairing we're seeing. Tristana Alistair coming out from the side of AoE here, so that could be uh, Tristana mid- uh, potentially still for the side of Runeweaver with the Alistair's support. And here's the thing. Okay, so what... There's not a lot of ADCs that would be able to punish this Alistair pick right off the bat here. Uh, if it's Tristana, Alistair, versus one of the few champions who can actually match that Tristana at level 2 with Hail of Blades here. Back? And and that's really good. The fact that you can match... The, I know, I know. The Zac, we'll, we'll get to the Zach. The fact that you can match that... Um, <laughs> Is something that'll keep you alive against some stronger AD carry, stronger lane pairings, as Tristana Alistair certainly is. Let's talk about the Zac though, um, because it's not something that is orthodox, I think is the proper way of using that word, but it is still going to give Wyo a lot of flexibility in their game plan once we hit that level five. Uh, yep, that, that is true. And the reason why I'm kind of hesitating on this uh, Zac pickup here is because. Zack is not very strong uh, early in terms of being out, able to output damage. It's more about the CC here and your ability to get in from all sorts of blind corners, which is why we don't see Zack too much in the current meta because a lot of it's about that damage, about that 2v2, about that 3v3. And if you're going to pick this, then you pick really strong uh, solo lanes to go with it here, potentially. Yeah. And actually, that could be a Zack solo lane. Uh, that could be a Zack top. Uh, that is a thing that exists. Uh, I don't like it early, but into a Leeson, it might actually work out pretty well. Yeah, I, I wonder maybe if it's a if it's a flex pick for the Leeson. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's a good point. I do like it for the jungle though, and that's where I'm expecting it to go mm. because it, Zach, his strength, like you alluded to, lies so much in his ability to gank the lanes that ideally it forces Wicklehouse into a position where he can't play the early game as passively anymore because to play to what your champion is good at, you simply must. Whereas on Morgana, it's not necessarily true. You can sort of walk around and pool and be like, I am doing my job now. Yeah, uh, potentially. Uh, we'll have to see because it makes feelings about whether or not it makes sense to pull somebody off their preferred playstyle. But you know what? Yeah, I think I'll agree with you for this one because 
they need a change. Wild Boomers need something to change here. And so far, uh, we haven't seen it. Renekton coming in as well. I, I like that a lot if we are going to see that Zac jungle here because that is the damage, right? You've got the, the setup here and you can chain CC as well. Renekton doesn't have a ton of really bad matchups here. I don't think we're going to see a Quinn come out from the side of Potato Hit. I could be wrong, but I sincerely doubt it. And with a Zac as well, you actually punish that Quinn really hard. And now it's probably not a Zach solo lane as well because uh, because the top lane uh, is normally where he would go. So definitely going to be a jungle pickup and a Lee Sin looking like it's going to be put still into that top lane as we haven't seen a jungler locked in just yet. And AoE have all the flexibility in the world here. They could give a counter pick, but it's tough. I, I, I think that you I think you leave Lee Sin to be counter picked at this point. You know what, Dia? I'm not gonna lie. This analyst death has been hard. These teams here drop stone make a ton of sense to me. Um, okay, so Rumble. Okay, they, they're putting Rumble in the jungle. Yeah, Rumble jungle probably Leeson, uh, most likely into the Renekton here. Uh, Rumble into Renekton is not the worst matchup, but it is a very punishable one. And with the Hollow games in play, I think the Leeson for uh, Potato Head just makes. So much more sense. I like the Nico pickup here. I was just looking at the Rumble going, I really don't like the Rumble with this composition. And I think uh, Rumble jungle, Rumble early pick here is often misused right now. Rumble has a lot of base power here, but I think you need to use it optimally with setup. And that setup needs to be AoE. Pop Blossom from Nico fits perfectly. We don't get to see Trinity Zareth again. I know DJ was screaming, why not Victor? Well, DJ, you get your Trinity Victor. <laughs> yeah, th th this is a really nice adaptation as well. He's got a lot more flexibility. He's a lot more meta than the Zareth, and with good reason. I think Victor is going to provide actually a sort of consistent DPS to Wyo as an alternate to Palm Goat, where they wouldn't really have had anything before, and Zareth doesn't really fit that bill. It's especially useful because he can play pretty far back and disengage a lot in team fights. Hopefully, stuff in a little bit of that Nico engage. But it's going to be so useful for the wombo combo of AOE. And one thing I really like about Wyo's Boomer's composition this game as well is that it is simple. This is a straight front to back. You've dropped yourself some really solid engage. Uh, you know, everybody knows how to play this composition by this point. So nice and simple, go back to the basics. They tried to do, you know, fancier stuff with Polk. Last game didn't work out. Game one, uh, they had kind of that pseudo uh, engage comp with Averis. That didn't work out either. This time, orthodox front to back. Your biggest issue is just making sure you don't get caught by that red carpet pop blossom combination there. That, that that is going to be pretty difficult in and of itself because AOE, remember, are still playing these team fights really well. It's what got them some crazy stuff done last game off of what was otherwise a relatively negligible lead in the early game. They were doing well, don't get me wrong, but they, it was something that you could counterplay and they really do tend to seal the deal with these early fights. So I'm excited to see Runeweaver pilot a champion that's pretty unique that we don't get to see a lot and more so in in team fights with a team that is new but has looked really coordinated. And we ha we actually have seen, uh, well, bits of Runeweaver piloting the champion from last week here in some of those clips. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Runeweaver played two games of Cassio, one game of Nico last week. Uh, the Nico was game two. And on Nico, Runeweaver was very dominant in lane, was able to land all the pokes, all the snares here. But in the team fights, those pop blossoms were a little hit or miss there. I remember <laughs> the, the, the single <laughs> root pop blossom. I was like, no. And that's not what you want to see from AoE God Squad. So perhaps this will be the redemption story coming through uh, for... Rune Weaver here, but more importantly, I, I just like the draw from AoE in terms of the high skill ceiling that comes out. Very mechanical champions across the board here. Lee Sin, super high cap. We've seen it before for both these players. When Potato Hit played it, it looked amazing. When Papa Francesco played it, a little less. Uh, Rumble as well. I know people don't think of it as a high skill cap champion. It's a pretty basic champion. You turn on Flame Spitter, but at MSI, when I was watching some of the games, you do need to manage that resource there, that uh, that heat bar. Uh, I can't remember what the resource is called, but yeah. you have to watch when you overheat. And laying down that equalizer is absolutely massive because half of Rumble is basically just the ult. If you miss the ult, Rumble does very minimal uh, things in team fights here. And Nico, we've talked a lot about that pop blossom. It's about that positioning, about the mental games you can play with the clones, with the changing, uh, who you look like as well. I want to see if Runeweaver can really step up to that here. If they can, we might get another FF game because uh, the skill ceiling on this is to the moon. 
Now, now with with skill ceilings, there does still tend to come a sort of expected play style. It's not like you're the most flexible composition, just you're all playing Yasuo, right? And so I, I want to know, with AoE God Squad's comp, because they do have all these high skill ceilings, what are they trying to execute on? What's their focus in the early and mid game? I think in the early game here, uh, it's going to be the same focus they've had all series. The uh, get somebody ahead. Anybody. <laughs> they have every lane here which can get a hit can take over a game. But I suspect we'll be looking still at that top lane matchup a little bit here because Potato Hit has been so strong. And if we think back to game one when Potato Hit had the lease in, Wild Boomers picked Set as a counter pick here. This time they picked Renekton as a counter pick. But if Potato Hit gets ahead on the lease in, the counters don't matter. Potato Hit can just crush the lane. And if you can get Potato Hit to that point, then the, the composition matters a lot less. You don't have to worry about trying to line up that Equalizer Pop Blossom uh, quite as much here. I would like to see focus on the bot side, though, because I think Paxax uh, has largely been ignored for the most part here. Uh, Dibble and Paxax just kind of lane against Palm Gold, and that's it. But Paxax has some of the best stats in the league, and it's a Tristana. Let that Tristana yeah. pop off, and the bot lane's kind of run and done. You got two different ways you can play the game as AoE God Squad, as merited by the way that they have proven themselves in previous games and what they've drafted themselves this time. This time you can go top lane, you can go bot lane. Why O Boomers though? Where are you heading? O oh, Boomers is a little bit more complicated here. I, I don't think you're looking at the Victor to necessarily dominate out uh, the Nico here. It was the counter pick, it was the last pick here, but it's not a, a straight winning lane. I would like to see them focus top lane because I think Papa Francesco needs some help. The Renekton is a counter pick here. You can abuse that Leeson with that Zack. So go ahead and do just that. And if you get Papa Francesco ahead, the game gets so much easier. We've not seen a game where Potato Head hasn't taken off. And this, focus on Potato Head. He's the, if he's the visible win con that has been winning over and over and over again, sure, you have, you have to worry about Paxax, Rune Weaver. Yeah, but not right now. Deal with your biggest problem first, top lane. Yeah, and th th there's a lot of pressure for my end on Wicklehouse as well on the Zac, not just because of the Renekton, but because, you know, I, I want to see a Zac succeed. Let's see if they do, though, as AoE God Squad are going up against YO Boomers in just a few minutes. DJ and Necrox will take good care of you once we hit the rift, so let's send it over to them. You guys have a great game. Gonna try to find the re-engage, but Birdman has the flash available. That could be big. The petrifying gaze and find anyone, but it's gonna slow. There's your piercing. We're gonna try to find the re-engage, but Birdman has the flash available. That could be big. The petrifying gaze and find anyone, but it's gonna slow. There's your piercing darkness, but it doesn't matter. Roach is away. Haha. <laughs> Y'all know it's the meme team time. Everybody here thinking they can bust a sick rhyme. We're gonna try to find the re-engage, but Birdman has the flash available. That could be big. The petrifying gaze and find a new one, but it's gonna slow. There's your piercing darkness, but it doesn't matter. Roach is away. Haha. Ha. Y'all know it's the meme team time. Everybody here thinking they can bust a sick rhyme. Well, I'm here showing up to shut you down and prove that the boomers are the best team all around. Let's start from the top. Bear man, know it ain't oh dear. Relentless storm, Francisco's got you full of fear. Caught in the headlights, shock stunned like a deer. He'll spook the skies open, make it rain with your tasty tears. He got them bear claws. You know he's getting fed. Your sorry carcass fills your friends with that sickly dread. Grab a towel, man, you'll need to wipe your brow. Cause when you step into the lane, who's your daddy now? You try to show up, but you need to get scattered. Cause Trinity won't stand for your stupid chatter. All this clatter. Your tasty batter, he's getting fatter, served your deaths on a silver platter. Control mages like a puppeteer. To the left, to the right, and your death is clear. One hop, all it takes is a single sphere. Turn your screen gray, he laughs as you disappear. You getting a picture? Do I need to spell it out? W-Y-O, that's who I'm talking about. You can pout, you got no clout. You think you got a chance? Please, I'll press X to doubt. What's wrong, kid? Need a break? Need a little shade? Does the truth cut deep like a boomer blade? It's time to bow down. The king of bot displayed. While you degrade, getting played, his wins are ricocheted. Body after body, the corpse mountain piled high. That's how he likes it. Palm goat lets the bullets fly. Y'all know gloats, they love to climb. 
That's why they're known as the greatest of all time. Try to assess and you try to take them down. Enjoy the anchor to your face as you're dragged all around. I call it CC, you call it Death Note. Cause when the depth charge rings, it's your name he wrote. They call him Birdman cause he'll send you flying. Your backup base respawning, still typing. You should be crying, you're denying, teammates sighing. I swear it's my pain, you exclaim, but you're lying. All across the lift, you'll never see him coming. Rest zero, here's your heartbeat. The constant drumming, the beat is thrumping. The speed becoming fast paced, your panic, cause there's no chance of running. You pick a card, any one of them will do. Out of all these junglers, all of them 52. You think it matters? Don't let it misconstrue. Master of the mall and he'll still silence you. Call us Hawaii, cause every lane's an island. Stacking solo kills, y'all were claim we are styling. I ain't lying. You're realizing we're redefining Boomer and it's you who'll be retiring. Like Vesuvius, you just can't handle us. We'll bury you in ash and dust and leave without a fuss. Our pirate classic flow chokes you out what you're lost in. If you try to come and play, best bring a coffin. Fight mother nature, please, it's you who'll see your fate is sealed. Open up the fortune cookie, your destiny revealed. You can't beat Everest, your climb is temporary. The whole world could end and we'll still be standing solitary. We're unbreakable, the highest thing on planet Earth. You think a couple L's points to our real worth? Y'all don't seem to understand, comprehend. The Vlad Banner's legacy is coming to an end. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rift. We are go next to C. Sorry, Excellency. As it is AoE God Squad taking on Rage Quit. Sorry, YO Boomers on the Rift. But in all seriousness, DJ, it's YO taking on AoE. And they need Jake's lyrics to bring them some inspiration to grab at least one win after all this demise that they've been seeing all night long. Yeah, they certainly do, Necrox. It has been some rough going here for YO Boomers, and you do hate to see it. Uh, you can clearly, obvious, I mean, obviously, you can tell that the last game did not end very well for their mental, and they do need to bounce back. So hopefully Jake's reminder of their success from last season, of their success from the last two seasons, can pop some inspiration. Hopefully this Renekton pick will give Papa Francesco some more agency to stay alive in this top side because a lot of this has been coming through Potato Head in the last two games. 7-0 and 7 at one point on the Lee Sin, then the Quadra kill after being 3-0 and 4 on the Yona. He has absolutely dominated proceedings here today. And game one, a lot of it was on their own. Game two, plenty of intervention, of course, from Mel Scout. 
Uh, but we'll have to find an answer there from both Papa and Wicklehouse to stop that from being AOE's win condition and force them into something else. Because we've seen that pre-20 minutes AOE, pretty sick, but we saw post-20 minutes AOE in game number one. And even though they were fully in control, it was a little messy. So maybe if we get to that point, we see a completely different side of this team. And that we know is an area where traditionally, historically, Wild Boomers have been really, really strong. Yeah, we know their team fighting has been successful. I mean, even in the rap video, Jake mentions it, how good they are when they can become together and just generate these team fights with their carries and palm goat and trinity we've seen it time and time again and this is where the organization and the team has found success whether they can get there or not though is the biggest question we've said it before we heard it on the desk slow down the game if you're wyo boomers get control over the rift and maybe there's something here to be found but i'll be honest my feelings are even a little bit hurt after the uh, rap video i thought i was the rap god of excellency but jake he has channeled that energy into Wyo Boomers. He have graced them with the most beautiful lyrics that anyone in Excellency has ever written, at least in my opinion. And now it's time to execute. Uh, maybe someone uh, on Wyo, maybe Wicklehouse, the shot color here, has that rap video playing in the background because it's going to be desperately needed for some motivation to get this game. So far, though, everything is per normal as Potato tries to take this 1v1, doesn't end up winning the trade necessarily, and Wicklehouse is coming up top. It's a race as Mel Scout still has his top side to clear, but Wickle is forsaking that red buff, looking for the gank very early on. Yeah, forsaking both of his bottom, or two of his camps here in the top side. We'll see if it pays off, but he's showing himself in lane. He's just trying to help the push, but here comes Mel Scout. Mel Scout wants first blood. He smells it in the water. Double slow into Wickle House. He's burning so low. The base Good damages flash. are too much. Flash away. We'll get him away from the resonating strike, but... A good counter gank there. Mel Scout on top of this jungle pathing. And Wyo Boomers end up netting nothing. I mean, they net negative there, Necrox. They lose a flash. They lose the wave prow. So the full push comes in here. And the free recall from Potato Head, he will... Well, he hasn't actually finished recalling. But this is still a very scary position as Mel Scout shows up in mid lane for Papa Francesco. The wave's not in his favor. He ticks level four. He gets cued. This is scary. This is so scary. Oh! First blood. And Papa, for the first time in the top lane, has begun to change what we were expecting in this matchup to grant himself a victory. Not sure if that bot crab was actually stolen. Here comes the TP back in, though. It's Rune Weaver. Excuse me, Potato, that wants a piece of this one. Flash away. Flash follow. One more auto. And burn down to the grave. Ends up overall one for one. Good repeat there by Mel Scout, helping out his top laner as he had in multiple games. Deeble is going so low, he's just dead. He's just gone. Good stuff there. Nicely done in the 2v2. Palm Goat showing up big with Burn Man connecting the binding. That Halo Blades Varus is something that I wanted to touch on as we got a little bit later in. But we didn't have time to get later in. Palm Goat running this Halo Blade still could be running on hit. But I think we're going to get a little bit more of a poke action going on. Meanwhile, topside, Mel Scout still looking to gank here as well. Papa slicing his way away, but he does not have the dice available. Trying to trade one back, but there's no Cole the Meek. And this Crocodile, man, he's so damn sad. Yeah, a little unlucky there for Papa as it is just Mel Scout piling in on him again. He's sacrificing camps here. This is a rumble. It's supposed to be a power farmer, but he's doing it again. He's sacrificing pathing. The Zac should not be ahead of him in CS, but he is because of the decision making from Mel Scout to pile on to Papa Francesco. The wave not going to lose too much, hopefully keeping himself mentally strong here as again, he is being camped, but his team can potentially take the resources and put them elsewhere. Keep your Eyes on Wicklehouse who's setting up for a gank. Wicklehouse jumping in. There's one Ooh, stretching Deeble. strike. Needs to pull him back with a mini. And gets it in time. Dival's going to be rooted up. Well done by Birdman. Not to throw it away. And Wicklehouse does not need to land the stretching strike. All he needed was one form of CC to connect. And that's another kill to Palm Goat.
Yeah, and you can see it in chat here. Wild waking up in game three. Maybe they got a little bit of the AM coffee in their system between game two and three. Of course, no, our lovely sponsor no. here. Shut up. Shut up, DJ. I take it up your crap every day of the week, and that one does not go unpunished. I don't care that Pag Sax is dead under his turn. You are in timeout. There is no excuse for such a disgusting sellout live on air AM grind i hope you're listening this man has just sold out the on-air integrity for the coffee now papa top lane looking for the solo kill he's got it meanwhile potato is dead again to a nice cold the meek the crocodile is two and one mel scout fails the gank under wickle house for a counter setup and man you have to wake up now because why have come alive in the series and you go right back to wake up. You're the king of puns here, that guys. I don't know why I'm taking crap from you about this. Our sponsors are happy with us, and so is Wild Boomers, as they are picking up kills left, right, and center here. Three kills to the good, 1.5k gold after that solo kill from Papa, looking so much better here in game three, already two and two on the croc, feeling pretty strong here as the first Drake is on the map. It looks like AoE God Squad want it. They are setting up for it, and they are dangerous as those Sork Boots are in here for Mel Scout. That's really all you need on this Rumble to do a ton of damage in the early game. Yeah, this base damage is just ridiculous. Along with the two top laners, who's still looking quite scrappy. Papa slicing his way forward. The dice as well. Colomite comes out a little bit early, so will not be able to find a kill. Mel Scout along with the rest of his team looking to get some counter jungling done blue buff should be taken away here smite yeah that one will be secured by mel scout who is now level six the equalizer is online birdman is here but it's palm goat that needs to be careful the black shield does not get you to safety this time there's no flash and burn down shut down we'll go to pack sack so that should be free drake to aoe yeah, free Drake there. It wouldn't have made much of a difference, but I do think Birdman and Palm Goat are going to need to have a conversation about the Black Shield timing there. It did not come down at the right time to immune the slow, and that is what you're trying to get rid of so that Palm Goat can try to walk out of that one again. It wouldn't have mattered there. He was definitely out of position. There were four members around him, but that is something you're going to want to sort out here as these fights around Drakes and objectives continue this game. Meanwhile, ultis might be traded in mid, Rune Weaver looking for the 1v1, but the further you get away from that Chaos Storm, the worse it gets for you. It's just too slow. Papa Francesco getting the slice. There's one more. The dice still Ooh. available. Maybe come back in. Potato wants more of the action, but has to immediately W his way out. Wicklehouse, meanwhile, in the bot lane has a black shield behind him. Clap together, and man, that sounds good. And you know what it sounds like? A double kill to Palm Goat. He's 4-1-1. One, and one. Maybe slightly misplayed in the river, but he's made up for it. This poke Varus is going to hurt with every arrow that connects. Oh yeah, he's gonna hurt a lot here, Necrox. This is so much better from Wild Boomers. Again, Papa gets a little bit camped in the early game, but it's Wicklehouse taking that tempo, taking that time. Yes, he's back down on CS, but he's made good plays with the time that's been afforded from those sacrifice in the top lane. And now, Paxax, he is suspicious. He gets the ward down. Good work there, Paxax. Love it. Spidey senses tingling as he realizes that they want to bury him like a like we has been burying Papa on the other side of the map. He is very far behind here. 10 CS and three kills down as Palm Goat and the rest of Wild Boomers asserting their dominance back over bottom lane. And while we're at it, DJ, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a coffee drinker, but there's something that Wild have drank here in that AM grind that has completely reinvigorated the way they play. This is crazy. This is nowhere near what we saw in game one. Paxax was getting free farm. Their top lane was getting demolished. It's completely different this time around. Potato is struggling to keep up here. Papa doing way better in this isolated 1v1. Wicklehouse getting very aggressive for Wyo. And they, yes, they control the game. And I mean, it's not a devastating 
uh, early game for AoE, but certainly not what they're used to. And now for the first time in the series, it feels like AoE is going to have to do something in late game with their team fights. Vongo flashing away. Dival has the Ooh. angle if they want the headbutt pull, but Paxax was not in the same memo. There's the exhaust flashing forward. Buster shot. Shutdown's going to go over to Dival. But what does a re-engage look like? Birdman and Trinity have both arrived. TP in. It's going to arrive awfully soon. You need to get this fight before the rest of the team comes through. Flash Pop Blossom will connect on two, and it's so much damage. Here comes the equalizer. Trinity looking to trade one back, but he's going to be burned down. Three for one. AoE God Squad arrive in the bot lane, and the team fight goes their way for it. Huge TP from Rune Weaver turns everything around there. It was another decent looking play from Wild Boomers. Yes, Palm Goat was a little too far in the lane, but he knew he had his support and his jungler in his back pocket that could get down there really, really quickly. And it looked like an overextension after Dival went a little bit too far. Paxax didn't have the jump to join him, so he has to flash. Yes, he gets the reset, but he falls at the end of it. Doesn't matter though, because Rune Weaver TPs down to join and hits three critical members with oh. that ulti. Now, mid lane turret going down, Mel Scout surviving with Ow. an ounce of health, but they have managed to escape with their lives and take the first turret of the game down, the critical mid lane tier one off the map. That's massive, honestly. Yes, it's one turret. Yes, it's early in the game, but opening up mid is just so impactful. We're going to get one more look at that bot lane skirmish to see exactly how we AoE have turned this fight around. And here we go. Yeah, we look at it once again. You see Palm Goat just kind of isolated, but look at the look at the river there, right? You can see where Wickle House is. He's not that far away. So Palm Goat flashes to buy time, and then Dival going a little far. Meanwhile, picture in picture, we got it all in the top lane. They're both going to survive, so we can just lane. go back, I think. <laughs> a little yeah, unlucky it's there. Close. <laughs> it was a oh. flash kick for Potato under the turret. Papa doesn't have flash. Yes, oh, the he just gets him. Oh, and there it is. Easy as you what? like it now. The bot side jump the fight. Gonna break out as well. The equalizer is gonna do a little bit of damage, but Paxax already taken down. Birdman going golden. Pop and Palm goes still being able to free fire. One more arrow will get this kill. Can you line it up? Wait for it. Oh, it misses, but they got it anyway. Has to dodge out. So we'll give the kill on over once again to this Varus with the desk blade already. Rune Weaver, you're in the wrong spot, my guy. This is not your side of summoners. Rift, and now the chase is on. TP from Potato trying to reinforce, but why are you coming into this one? This is not what you want to see. Can they actually turn this one around into 3v5? Birdman is low, keeping himself alive. The disengage is called for Wire. They don't want to push too far, even with the passive, even with Birdman having a little bit of HP. They don't want to push any further. A one for nothing as AoE with a health advantage will look to grab Dragon, but Trinity still here along with Papa. Yeah, Rune Weaver low with the snipe! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Palm Goat lands it, and the man does not miss. Now, over the wall, Kelms Potato looking to make the play by himself. That's but just what crazy. are you doing, my man? That's not the play. That's not the move. And Mel Scout, where are you now? You're stuck in the mid lane against the Crocodile. Cole the Meek not going to be able to do enough. Turns this one around with the Equalizer. Does not He's tag dead. him with the E, though. Trinity over the wall has no flash. Has a gravity well. That's a slow pop of whoopsie daisy. Tries to slice over the wall, but just face plants and now Dival looking for the re-engage a nice knock up will find the way the insect is in under Wickle House who does not get over the wall with a slingshot shut down over to pack sacks this game has gone berserk honestly there is some very post 20 minutes AOE coming out here in pre 20 minutes uh Necrox they are just way too trigger happy here as Palm Goat probably is too yes he's gonna kill Mel Scout I think he should die for it though yeah, he's probably just dead over the wall. One more kill, yes, but oh, this is Ooh, this really might be a dangerous. Down angle. Shirelius yeah. from Birdman trying to run. He's dead, certainly, trying to trade one back there. Meanwhile, top side, some reason. Potato solo kills Papa. Good God, DJ. We got a nightmare on Summoner's Rift, and AoE God Squad are relishing in the darkness. Yeah, man, everyone is trying to give each other gold here. It's like a big prop each other up session. You know, you kill me, then I kill you, then you can kill me, then I can kill you. Eventually, we'll all end up with five items and we'll all be so happy and jolly. That's what it kind of <laughs> looks like here at Necrox because everyone is just killing each other. Everyone's running way too far. I mean, 
Potato Head's jumping over the wall to try to execute the AD carry into a Zac that he knows still has passive. That's grief. Then Palm Goat walks in between turrets to trade kills on Mel Scout while he's carrying a shutdown. That's grief. Like, this is a lot of grief going on here, Necrox. And we got to take a deep breath and recognize again two drakes for AoE God Squad. But Wild Boomers, they shouldn't want these fights. They should want to slow this game down. It's a Rumble. It's a Lee Sin. It's a Nico. You can win in the late game with this Victor and this uh, Virus Zach. Like, you have the scaling. Slow down. Let them run into you. Keep absorbing the pressure and you're gonna come out on top at some point this only feeds what aoe wants and feeds their potential comeback yeah and trying to slow it down as papa as he slices his way from an attempted gank from diable and mel scout so he will get back to safety as we get just a moment to breathe there might not be too much time put your ventilator right back on as pack sax is just deleted where he stands under the mid tier one papa looking as well dicing away from the resonating strike mel scout soon to arrive in mid but wicklehouse soon to arrive in top maybe thinking about it but there's a ward there so we'll not be able to dive onto potato he will be able to walk back and we're going to get another look at this big fight that may just determine our game yeah, we'll take a look here. So this is what I'm talking about. Yes, Palm Goat picks up this kill on Mel Scout, but look at where he is. There's no way he gets out of here. He's no mana. The Black Shield doesn't do enough, and you just give Paxax a reset. Meanwhile, picture in picture, we got to buy the top lane. Already one down for AoE. Potato gonna go down. Papa gonna go down. So is Rune Weaver dropping like flies. AoE God Squad lose two. Wild lose one. A critical pick there in the river for Wyo will give them a little bit more priority over the top lane, but Wicklehouse cannot push this one by himself. He really does not have any siege damage, so just fighting for fighting's sake. And DJ, this wasn't the condition we wanted to see for Wyo. It feels like they're playing down to AoE, and I hate to put it in that way, but AoE are just luring them in fight after fight. Just stop, just play back, play for your late game scaling. Trinity's on Victor. This is what we want to see from the mid lane. Palm Goat on a utility AD carry as well, but they're just getting lured in and AoE God Squad creating chaos once more. But this time around, the chaos doesn't necessarily all go one direction. That's the difference. Yeah, Boomer's fighting back in these skirmishes very nicely. You know, they still do have a 1.5k gold lead here. They should be feeling fine with their composition. Again, I just need to emphasize, I think they need to take a deep breath. Yes, you can take some skirmishes if you have all the variables assessed and you know they cannot join, but they want skirmishes. They want that entry back into the game because the later this goes, the harder it will be to deal with Trinity. The harder it will be to deal with Palm Goat. All of the range, all of the pick. I mean, look, the ulti has to be popped here by dive to stay alive under the mid lane turret that is what this composition looks like as the game goes on and it will be a strong composition in the hands of one of the best team fighting teams we have in excellency so deep breaths here wild boomers you got your angle in the game this could be one of the skirmishes that works out for him though equalizer gonna go down into wickle house who's trying to make the play potato gonna hop away with the safeguard but here comes the play from wick and papa mill scout's already deleted potato on the run but he's just gonna go down one more auto over the wall he's gonna get himself to safety for now can he survive, though? He's on the wrong side of the rift. He will oh, retreat goodbye. back to his team. Solo kill in bot lane, meanwhile, cannot get far enough away. Stretching strike from Wickle. Can he get a little bit more damage, though? No, it's a flash for naught. As trying to follow through was Wyo Boomers. They do not have the range. And Potato will get away. Yeah, this keeps looking better and better for Wild Boomers catching AoE in the top river with absolutely no support. Rune Weaver didn't TP up there. Pack Sax and Dival weren't nearby. Dival had to blow his ultimate earlier, so no support in the fight. They just lose two members for free, almost three. And Rune Weaver has really struggled here in the latter stages of this early to early mid game as he's been caught up multiple times, just dying side lane, taking multiple turret shots. AoE needs to be the ones to take a deep breath, reassess how they want to go about this, and really focus on this Drake coming up in 15 seconds because at the way this game is going, it's looking like Drake's soul might be their only win condition. Oh nice. boy. I guess a curse of Lee Sin, Dival. Going to have to use the ulti once again, so that will not be available for this Drake fight that you were mentioning. But without that ulti, up. there's probably no chance. Yeah, there's just no shot that you can contest. Your front line is completely gone. 
Potato is not tanky enough at this point, so Wild Boomers will get themselves a free dragon. That will get them to one. To the two that AoE God Squad have now confirmed as Papa frantically back up to the top side trying to defend, but against two, this turret probably just falls. So a trade here from AoE. As long as he can grab this turret, Wickle House going to be knocked up. Should be okay. The Slingshot is a little short there. Ulti from Palm Goat. Do they have enough damage though? I'm not sure that they do. There's the locket. One more arrow from Palm Goat to oh. so much damage. Wickle House going so low to safety, but Palm Goat is left by himself to burn. And Palm Goat back to the gray screen for the fourth time. Rift Herald was popped topside. And AoE get a win in two different places. Just why? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, yeah. What? Why? <laughs> why are you there? The Rift Herald's popped and toppling. You've got Papa Francesca moving back up. You don't need that pick. You do not need that pick in the enemy jungle. You've taken the Drake already. Wait four minutes for the next one to come up. I just don't understand it, Necrox. Why oh, just getting way too big for their britches? Yes, the game's going well for them. Yes, they're playing much better. It seems like they've overcome that sort of game two mental issue, like mental break they had at the end. But you know, to make plays like that, it's just an avenue back into this for AoE because it's so unnecessary. And it worries me as we go into this critical phase of the game here. 19 to 12 kills, score 22 minutes in. Yes, you've slowed down the dragon stacking, but mistakes like those can cost you if the soul comes in for AoE and they find a way to, to sneak their way really back into this game after the draft they have set up for themselves. Yeah, and I just have to agree, right? Like, wh why is Wyo trying to fight in places that they have no point in fighting? That's the second time Palm Goat has been near that bot side red buff of AoEs, and he just died. So, like, there's no way away. Even if you have Flash, Runeweaver just follows with a Flash of his own, and you're not, you know, this kiting 80 carry that can sort of maneuver your way around team fights. You're poke. You need to be at the maximum range possible. Really big question marks, in my opinion, about Wyo's success so far in this series and, and what they can do throughout the split. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, it's a pop blossom to try to deny the solo kill from Papa. Will do enough along with the root as a death brush is being set up topside. Again, Wyo just stretching themselves so thin, stretching themselves in every way possible, trying to set up as many plays and in many positions as possible. But that's just not what you need to do, right? It, it's sort of starting to get silly from Wyo at this point, and AoE, well, this is just how they play. This is the way that they lure you into games and, and win is by taking every skill check possible. Wyo, that's not what we wanted to see. Yes, they're in this game, but I, I don't have confidence moving forward if they continue this style and continue just fighting at every possible corner. So I'm still fairly confident their position in the game is very good. Nearly 3k gold up here. Palm Goat's still very strong. More importantly, as the game goes on, Trinity, 2, 1, and 3 here. Two items already in the locker looking very good. Uh, I, I think, you know, we got to look at Wicklehouse here. He is the play caller after Rosero's departure from the team. Just get this team, just get everybody to calm down a little bit, clear up vision like they're doing here, fight for vision appropriately as these objectives do spawn. But again, you can wait for this Drake in a minute 30. That's your critical objective to win at. And then if you can win that fight, you can walk over to the Baron and really make this a difficult game for AoE. Looks like they might have that in the comms right now as we do hit a little bit of a waiting for this fourth drake to spawn yeah just waiting for one more fight to break out a minute time on that dragon so that's probably the next stomping ground for either of these teams but in game three wyo have done a better job of just winning the fights that they have decided to take or winning the fights that aoe have decided to take and then they arrive to so a little bit more of an even position here for wyo but i i again you just need to play slow right you don't need to force all these different angles so the setup here has to be good they have to stay controlled but this isn't what you want to see your ad carry getting called out caught out as palm goat is just kicked into mel scout's flame spitter and just burned down 30 seconds on drake and 35 on palm goat's timer 
That's a bit rough there from Palm Goat. Maybe he just hasn't played against a whole lot of Rumble. I don't know how much practice there's been, but that's the third time this game really he's just disrespected the range of engage on this champion. I mean, you just pop that ulti, and it's not the damage, it's the slow. You just can't get away unless that slow is immune. So Palm Goat falls once again. Fortunately for him, I think he might be. Nah, he won't be up in time. This Drake's just going to go right over to AoE God Squad. So that is a very big mistake stake from the critical carry here on Wyo Boomers. This gives soul point to AoE God Squad, and now they'll have that option for themselves in five minutes. So that's a huge win for them and a big, big timing mistake from Ponga. Critically, though, that's not soul. Yes, it's soul point, but it only sets you up for success. It is not the success itself. So AoE have that avenue of victory come four and a half minutes now, but they also have an avenue through Baron if they feel comfortable enough to begin this one. For now, though, they'll just clear out vision, get as much priority over this objective as possible as Palm Goat trying to deny as much as he can. Thinking about it, engage, and there you go. Wicklehouse in the middle of everyone. Mel Scout having to flash away, but Wicklehouse burning so low. Ignite ticking from Dival, but he will not die. TP, TP now arriving. Resonating strike not able to land or the sonic wave. So AoE God Squad thinking about pulling a trigger there after a failed attempt by Wicklehouse. But they come up empty handed and Wyo walk away. Yeah, it's a failed attempt there. Wicklehouse a little low, but honestly, you can kind of be happy because you get the TP out of Rune Weaver. And it came in very, very late. Uh, a little bit of a slow reaction once again from this mid laner. He's been excellent all series long, but has been struggling much more so on this Nico in game three. Does expend that summoner spell and now will not have it for a potential secondary split push. Fortunately for AoE, Potato Head still has his TP available, so he can split bottom side here, apply pressure on the map make sure he can arrive at any potential baron fight as everything does reset we look across the items here critically three items now on both of the 80 carries those are going to be members to watch here in this mid game pack sacks getting a reset could mean a whole lot trinity is going to be the biggest primary force to try to deter pack sacks from going in with the consistent long range laser there Keep your eyes on Trinity and Palm Goat. They are the big members here. So what the house gets caught up, but he's a Zach. He's going to be just fine. Should be all right here, unless he wants to oh. stay around a little bit too long. There's the equalizer across everyone. Wicklehouse trying to get himself away to safety, but look who's just deleted. It's Mouse Scout. Palm Goat lands a critical arrow. Wicklehouse is going to go into the passive. Can they save the blobs? Can they save this one? The Pop Blossom will come out, but hit nothing other than the blobs themselves. Wicklehouse is going to go down. Pop up flashing in. The binding connects onto the Yellow Star. He's going to go down. Dival already killed. Now, a couple more kills to follow. The damage is massive. Birdman keeping himself alive. One more tormented soil will grab the kill while the top. Top laner oh is God. traded away. One more Trinity Rune Weaver. So low. Pop gold. Flashing forward. Finding the kill for YO Boomers. Making this one worth for the Boomers themselves. Four for two as they take a team fight win in the river. Yeah, they do it again here, and it got really close to their Necrox, but they are able to scrape it out. A nice couple of mechanical plays. Palm Goat, the first one, bursting out Mel Scout after he was forced to stop watch. Then it's Papa Francesco creating the front line. Palm Goat! Whoa, that damage, and you wanted to see Paxax show up and fight? That's what he can do if he gets backline access. For now, Palm Goat will be up for every critical objective. Well, unless they just want to start this one up, the 80 carries dead DJ Baron online right now, and there's no hesitation. I, I don't see why not. You just have to stop Zach. It can be a little tricky, but this is a great opportunity. Again, they're a bit of a mid-game composition here for AoE, so they see the chance, but Melska's oh taking so much damage. Oh, he cancels it. He cancels the jump. Can he get in in time? Wickle House has the flash, but it's secured by Mel Scout. And Wickle now House now has oh, no, no he has way. No passive. way. Pax -Ax. Pax -Ax is on a killing spree. The follow through oh. is there. Trinity Pax -Ax going go. golden, Pax -Ax but he's go. gonna die. Trinity is dead to rights, and Pax -Ax gets number two for himself in the Baron skirmish. Wyo Boomers with one error lose their eighty carry, lose the Baron, lose jungle and mid. Papa trying to scrounge up the jungle but god squad caught them napping oh my god necrox a 
huge errors in the mid game. AOE takes the lead for the first time all game long, 1K here. And once again, all of that comes off of Palm Goat being picked. Yes, he was huge in the team fight, but he steps too far again. Paxax punishes him and AOE take their chance. They take the Baron, they take the fight after Wicklehouse strands himself. And now as they wear the purple worm, their soul points here. Their sole chance is up in 15 seconds. Everything available for them, except for Paxax's flash, really. They can make this happen. There's the ulti. It's only on a Birdman, though. Birdman's gonna die. Here comes Wicklehouse, but he's immediately oh knocked out. What Pax a play from Dival to deny the engage. Wicklehouse now has to run. There's the resonating strike if he wants to take it. On to Papa, but Dival critically hits his key at the right time. Wicklehouse could have taken that opportunity, but AoE God Squad were ready for it. Soul now given to them. Cloud Soul to this AoE team. Palm got a couple more arrows over the wall, but Wyo now have to hold on. Game number three looks so good. They had the coffee coursing through their veins, but now the crash might come soon as they have to hold on against Soul and Baron. Yeah, it's going to be tricky here, but they're not out of this just yet. They have long range wave clear with this Victor, with this Varus. I think they can hold this, and here comes the engage. Another good disengage from Dival. Wicklehouse trying to make the play. They've got Paxax immediately. The Eddie Carry said Potato trying to get himself away with a nice kick. The Equalizer will find a few. Birdman going low, but it is split up the team. Wyo cannot regroup back together, and it is Papa in a 1v3 effort trying to find some sort of engage here, but he cannot do it without his squad. So one for nothing. A shutdown will be given to Wyo. They will stop the siege for now as they hold on for a little bit longer. Critical stuff there from Wild. Wicklehouse gets denied on the engage again, but I think AoE a little bit too split up. Their setup not ideal. Rude Weaver could not answer there. The TP is down as he was pushing top lane, and that gives enough access for them to burst out pack sacks. That is the critical member here on four items for AoE. Once they take him out, the fight is broken. They have to head for the hills. All they get out of it is the top tier two, and that will stop the Baron push. Nice stuff from Wyo Boomers to keep themselves alive in this game. And I want to look at that fight one more time. How did Paxax go down? It's a nice knockup, but they just lose their AD carry somehow. Oh, it's just a good shot. It's just, that's all it is. It's just a good snipe. And the equalizer, it tries, but it's just not enough. As they lose Paxax, they'll hold on for a little bit longer, DJ, but can you contest Elder? Can you contest Baron? As the siege has already done so much damage, Wyo have so little room to operate now. They're basically going in fully blind. Yeah, they're just going to need to establish vision. They haven't lost all their turrets yet. I will say in that last fight, it was nice. Um, the uh, was the stretching strike coming out for Wicklehouse that did pull Paxax back. I think in hindsight, Paxax will be looking at this one and thinking he probably should have jumped over the wall instead of back into mid lane. But that mechanical misplay aside, they're trying to want a Mel Scout. He has flash. Oh. He's dead, at least into the blobs, but they've got Melscout who dropped down the equalizer and everyone from Wild Pax other than his Zach is completely healthy. Guardian Angel gonna be pop. Palm Goat keeping himself alive, not low enough. The timing on the arrow does not connect. And Dival's got Palm Goat, but he's gonna risk his life for it. The gravity blow, no, buying a little bit of space, buying a little bit of time, but Papa's on the back line. He's got Pax Axe isolated to 1v1. The Ohio is gonna turn this one around. Dival's looking to hold him off if he can, but the rest of the fight will find Trinity Potato will die. Dival loses his life for it. Papa has done everything in this fight for Wyo Boomer so far. Palm Goat just stepping a little bit too far. Trinity stepping a little bit too far, but Luku's gone a little bit too far this time. It's Elise Sin going golden with the stopwatch. Keeping it up a little bit oh, alive, a little bit no, longer. But Potato is going to go down. Can he return the kill into a clouds? Yes, he can. He's going to get two. Potato and this Rude Weaver will not go down without a fight. And AoE God Squad will wipe away Wyo Boomers and now march straight down the midline. Oh man, Necrox, these fights are so close between these two teams. So very on a nice edge, but it's just a bit of an overextension for a while. Yes, they find Potato. They disrespect the stopwatch, and coming behind them is Rune Weaver and Dival. They were trying to see if they could clean up the kills in the first place.
place. And once they revealed where they were, they knew they had the flank. That cleans up what should have been a winning fight for Wyo Boomers after they catch out Packstacks under the turret. I think he went a little too far, Necrox, trying to chase a kill for a reset. That allowed Trinity to burst him out at the start of that fight. Paxex has got to play super safe here. This is such a long-range composition for a while. Yes, Palm Goat was down, but you still have to deal with Birdman's buying. You still have to deal with the laser and the CC from Whip the House. You really oh have to gosh. time your jumps right. They're just going on Baron. They're just shredding it. There's no time to breathe. There's no time to think. Why you'll have to act now? It has to be a hero steal. No, it's secured by Mel Scout and Wicklehouse. Now has to flash his way over the wall. Here comes a let's bounce with the equalizer. Will force everyone away. Why boomers on the run? Can they get far enough away? Yes, they have. Everyone has gotten out to safety. Oh my God. So much Mel damage. Scout's dead. Mel Scout needs to be careful. If Palm Goat times this one, Mel Scout's gonna drop. The jungler is dead, but Baron is still secured. Dybo now has to flash away, away from that chaos storm. Trinity's still in the chase. The Tangled Thorns will lock him up, but Trinity will get a Double kill, two kills for Baron, and AoE God Squad may be thinking a positive trade, but Elder on the board in a minute, and Wyo want as much priority as possible. Yeah, they can just shove right into the face of AoE here. There's not really great wave clear oh, no, as no. they're trying to force out Potato Head. I don't Rickle know about this under He's dead. Guardian Angel gonna keep Potato alive for the time being. No more damage to follow through. Wicklehouse is dead for so long. He's gonna be up as it spawns. Uh, Palm Goat trying to flash forward. One more arrow, but he's been locked up. Palm Goat, that's a critical positioning error. Papa going a little bit too far, but Dead doesn't land. That Q, that was so important to land. And there's another shutdown gonna go the way of Trinity. You wanted your main man in the mid lane to show up now. Wyo Boomers have found one more kill. And Elder's online before before Rude Weaver can even think about teleporting in. Yes, it is, but Wicklehouse is not up. He's gonna have to run all the way back. They have to respect that here on the side of Wyo Boomers. There's no flash on Palm Goat either. Everyone available except for that mid laner for AoE. They will be able to push in here and contest. You cannot start this. Wicklehouse just about to respawn. He needs to hustle over here. They're just gonna try and burst it down before he gets here. I think they, they can do it. it. They want it now. Elder down to about 5,000. Wicklehouse is not going to get here in time, but can Wyo take a winning fight? That's the biggest question. But against Elder, Elder, it seems so unlikely. So they just have to give the biggest objective in the game off of pure tempo. Rune Weaver, sure, he wasn't there, but the jungler is all that matters. And Wyo Boomers. 38 minutes in now have to stare down the face of elder and a base that is surely soon to take some crushing blows yeah elder gonna be tricky here not quite the sieging power that the baron does provide for me but a misstep could just get you destroyed by a rumble ultimate right into like a rude weaver ulti right there's a lot of options for aoe as they push up this mid lane they're waiting for rude weaver to go set up rude weaver's walking into a trap i don't think he knows never mind they're just on crux he saw him all right will be able to keep himself safe for now. Wyo Boomer's just playing wave clear at this point. Any fight that breaks out while Elder's still active is certainly a losing one, unless you get a numbers advantage like this one. Wicklehouse trying to land anything, but Rune Weaver's got his dancing shoes on. Can the team get here in time? The answer is yes, Rune Weaver's one HP. He's not gonna go oh, down, no. keep himself alive, barely, finally. Will tick down to that Sunfire, but they lose two in the process. Wicklehouse, yes, there it is. Double kill onto that Zack, and now it's Time for the base as AoE God Squad have gotten themselves a winning trade. Papa retreating back to the safety of his turrets, but AoE are relentless. They want these inhibitors. I mean, they're just going to burst into the base. There's no way to hold this off. You don't have any front line. Papa's your only member here. And if you get behind Papa, there's nothing to stop you from just bursting out Palm Goat. Going to run through the turret here. Pop, I'm just going to pop that uh, stride breaker. Not going to do a whole lot. Already one inhibitor down. The second destined to fall here without Trinity. I really think it was a huge mistake for Trinity to be the one stepping out to that lane. He's so critical. Wave clear. Birdman, nice sidestep. Oh, oh, that one could have been a crushing loss for Wyo if Birdman had fallen. But it's already so crushing. Two inhibitors down. Oh my god, and they're just going to die. Laser from Mel Scout will ring Wyo's bells for the final time. Blink and you miss it, and game three is over. The final engage attempt by Wickle House is going forward, but Wyo's only going down as AoE cement themselves as a top tier team.
Paxax secures it with a triple and a final ace for AoE God Squad as they end their night 3-0. They end 3-0. It was rough. It was a messy game three. We saw a whole lot of post-20 minute AoE in this one, but they flip the script and they get a little bit of pre-20 AoE after that 20 minute mark does come in this time around. It was a much better fight back from Wild Boomers and Papa Francesco in particular, but some mistakes in mid-game shot calling, in grouping, get them picked off, lose them critical objectives, and give AoE their window into the game. They take advantage, they take a 3-0, and God, how broken is Rumble ulti cooldown, man? Like, that's just <laughs> stupid. Yeah, there's really, especially there with an immobile carry like Varus, there's nothing you can do if you don't have flash against things like Elder, against things like Baron. You just feel so bad. That there's no way to hold on. But the credit to AoE, this roster with a, a completely new lineup, you know, changes left and right. And it seems to work, even though it's chaos and creativity everywhere across the board. They always seem to find an advantage. Game three was shaky, but the mid game to mid late game shot calling paid off. They get critical objectives. They get soul everything to this team and they make it work and they make it look good. Yeah, they make it look very, very good for themselves, Necrox. It is a 3-0. They're going to be feeling great about that after the chaotic start they've had to this early season. Still some things to sort out for sure. Again, that was a very messy yeah. game three, despite the very convincing win in game two, or excuse me, in game one, where there were still some throws in he you know, here and there. There's still a lot to work out for this roster. You can see some gaps in their coordination. You can see some individual misplays. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you can just uh, pile onto top lane and say, potato head, save us, then, I mean, I, I guess why not? I mean, if the formula works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm going to need a ventilator after this banger of a series from AoE. And man, they are through the roof right now. Let's see what our analysts think about this series. After that, we'll be right back with an interview and then send you all off for the evening. DJ, we're going to give one more shot to our analysts to make sense of this series, because to me, my brain is still rattling. DNRMC, take it away. Welcome back, folks, to the analyst desk. It is the third time that we're here, the third time that AoE have won a game. And while I can't say that I'm surprised, uh, I definitely didn't expect things to be this convincing for the final game of the night, especially at the 15 minute mark. So often I'm asking you, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we're in 15, halfway through the average game. Um, what do you think is going to happen? And it was really even for the first couple. Well, it, it felt even, but realistically, it was Wild Boomers' game to lose. For the first time this series, Wild Boomers took over. And what shocked me was that it wasn't even from Wicklehouse ganking lanes. Papa Francesco, Palm Gold, and Birdman popped off in their individual lanes and just flat out won lane. And then the early game went good, and we saw post-20 AoE. Now we saw post-20 Wild Boomers. And I feel like I'm having some sort of fever dream from drinking too much of that coffee that they were imbibing all series long, because <laughs> it just... It just didn't stop making sense. <laughs> yeah, it felt a lot like if you turn the nameplates off, actually, I feel like you could have <laughs> sold me on this being AoE from game one because mm. of the individual differences that, that, they, that they displayed in lane. But it gave me hope for a while overall uh, because mm. they were able to, in their solo lanes and even in their duo lanes, step up to the plate and challenge a team that is built on star power. Um, and you know what? Wild Boomers, I think this game three was the style that they liked to play. If we watch how it kind of went off uh, towards the end, it was Palm Gold. It was Trinity who were sort of the, the big main carries. The initiates were coming off Wickle House. This was what we expected to see, but didn't get to see all series long. And honestly, the strategy still kind of works. It just came down to a couple of uh, mechanical misplays. It went so long that a single death meant Elder, meant Baron, meant game. And I think it's it just kind of coin flipped at the end of it. And the fact that Wild Boomers could bring AoE all the way there after they F'd at, F'd at 20 last game speaks a lot to the resilience of this team. Yeah, what, what were your, the biggest... I know that the solo kills obviously uh, lent, lent themselves to it, but I sensed that there was a different way that they were approaching, especially the team fights here, uh, as 
the YO boomers, but what changed about their map play from game two to three to actually make this so much more difficult of a game for AoE? Uh, part of it had to do with the draft here. AoE didn't have good engage into the poke of that Varus there. And Palm Goat on Varus basically made or broke uh, this entire game. When Palm Goat got caught, fight was over, AoE gets to run the map. When Palm Goat's up, you could see how much Wild struggle, uh, how much pardon me, AoE struggled to deal with Wild Boomers. They couldn't engage properly. They just had to eat all the poke in the world trying to get in there. So uh, I think a lot of it just came down to draft this game and the fact that uh, Papa Francesca didn't die in lane, went, got ahead in lane, and just that between those two facts, like that was all they needed, really. Yeah, the, the Renekton was funny, and it was funny not just because he was winning, winning lane, but also because he was overextending sometimes. It, like it was, it, it, we just got all ranges of play from Papa Francesco and from Wyo Boomers as a whole tonight. I really enjoyed having them back on stream. This this team never fails to entertain, and AOE doesn't look like they're going to either. Keep in mind that this is a new roster, a new group of five. And hopefully, as they continue to develop, as they continue to nail that down and actually get a play style going, that individual talent that we saw straight up crush games today is going to turn into something amazing. It's worth updating you, though, on the rest of the league before we toss this over. Glaive Esports Onyx versus Lotus went 2-1 to Lotus, who flashed that fight, took their series against Rage Quit in a clean three sweep. Sparta Prime and New Age Frost went 2-1 to Sparta, and as you know here, AoE God Squad swept it all against Wyo. We've got run one rescheduled game, so be sure to check in for those results later, as it is LBK Lemons against Gamers for God. RMC, thank you so much for your help on the Analyst Desk. I'm going to toss this one now over to an interview.